My name is Lane Barnes. I am a computer engineering major and I am enrolled in ECE 331 and 311. I am not enrolled in ECE 451. I will be talking about the 331 and 311 perspectives of the audio amplification circuit found in mobile devices. First, I will talk about the 311 perspective of this circuit. To analyze the circuit, we will focus on a small signal model with the transistors as voltage dependent current sources. We can do this because the amplitude of the signal at 10 millivolts coming into the system is small. This means that the higher orders of the Taylor series expansion are very close to zero, and only the zeroth and first order terms take effect. This means that when we have a small signal, we could treat our circuit as a linear time invariant system. This is important as we are now able to predict the output of the system with the properties of linear systems. First, because our system is time invariant, any periodic signal we pass in will have a output signal with the same period. Second, we can represent our input as a summation of sinusoids and expect an output of those same sinusoids multiplied by the frequency response of the system. Now all we have to do is find the frequency response. To do this, we take the Fourier transform of V out over Vn by sweeping frequency and cadence. Because of the multiplication convolution property of Fourier transform, our V out function omega divided by the Vn function of omega is the same thing as our big H of omega. We could have also taken the Fourier transform of the impulse response of our circuit, but this would be much more difficult. To get an equation, we can export our frequency response from cadence and do a curve fitting using MATLAB. To test our new frequency response, we can input a test signal in and compare the expected output to the actual output. In the pre-work, we used a periodic square wave as our test signal. Because our input is just a summation of different sinusoids, we can use Fourier series coefficients combined with our frequency response to represent our expected output. When we plot the Fourier series of our square wave input in frequency domain, we get a sync function that gives us our series coefficients. Multiplying our coefficients with our sinusoids multiplied with our frequency response, we have the output of our system in frequency domain. When we take our output from frequency back into time domain, we find that we have a close approximation of a square wave of the same period with an increased amplitude. When we plot our actual output in cadence, we get exactly what we expected, meaning that all of our work up to this point is correct. Now I will talk about the electronics perspective of this circuit. As discussed before, we are analyzing the small signal model of this circuit. To represent the small signal model, we convert the transistors into voltage-dependent current sources. What this means is that we can use normal DC analysis methods such as KVL and KCL in order to find things such as the gain. The gain is obviously an important value to know how much our circuit amplifies our signal, but it is also important to find the frequency response. We can find that we have the correct gain by comparing the calculated gain with what we got in the cadence simulation. In the pre-work, question 5 asks us what will happen to our output when we turn our voltage bias up to 200 millivolts from 10 millivolts. This is an interesting question because up to this point we have been assuming that our circuit is a linear system. We were able to assume this because the operating regions of our transistors have been located in the linear region. Now that our bias is turned up, we are now located in the saturation region. Our circuit is no longer linear, meaning that we can expect distortion in our output. When we input a simple sinusoid into our circuit, we will get a different shape from that sinusoid. In question 6, we are asked why we need a second transistor just before the speaker. There are two things that make a circuit a good amplifier, a large gain and a low output resistance. The, fit, the first transistor has a great gain but high output resistance. To fix this, we have a second transistor connected to the first speaker. The second transistor sacrifices some gain to have a low output resistance. The reason why output resistance is so important 
is that we want all of our voltage drop and power consumption across our speaker. When we have a high output resistance, it wastes a lot of energy as heat instead of sound. In this KI, we have learned how to calculate the output signal of our amplifier and how to test the correctness of our calculation. We have learned how to analyze the amplifier at the circuit level and identify what characteristics a good amplifier has. This concludes my presentation. Thank you for your time.